So actually the internet has changed everything for anybody connected with personal development and coaching and helping mm-hmm. to serve other people in a much quicker and much more sustainable and robust way. Yes, it's like the world is so much accessible now at your fingertips, as they say, right? But it yeah, probably comes it's with so this... so much smaller. It's smaller, but it probably comes with these challenges as well, right? I mean, it's uh, it's in some ways opened up doors for so many people, but I just find it sometimes it's challenging as well. Do you find that? Being yeah, it can, it can be challenging in the online space. Um, all of a sudden there seems to be a whole raft of people who are calling themselves coaches. And I think there are some dangers with that because there's a lot of people, I'm not saying everyone, absolutely not, but there may be some people out there who have invested a lot of money in fantastic marketing, brilliant-looking websites, and but who don't have the background, the expertise, and the experience to actually serve someone with integrity and get people that result. So there is an awareness around social media and what people are saying. And I think the onus is on a potential client to absolutely make sure that they have carried out their due diligence and that they've looked for social proof and testimonials and that they have done the research because coaching is an investment. It, and for many people, it's the first time that they've made such a, a, a large investment in themselves. You know, people talk about investments along the lines of perhaps purchasing a house or buying a car. And coaching is an investment like that. It normally is a sizable amount of money. And so, therefore, you wouldn't spend that amount of money without absolutely doing your due diligence and carrying out your research and absolutely making sure that the coach that you're about to enter into an agreement with has got the experience and expertise in the way that they say that they have. So I think there is an onus on potential clients to absolutely do that. And if they have any red flags whatsoever, then they should not enter into that relationship. Because a coaching relationship with an individual is a highly specialized relationship. It's, you know, it's, it's so precious because the coach will hear things from that person that perhaps they have never spoken about to anyone else ever in their lives before. And so therefore it deserves to be treated with the utmost degree of preciousness. Yes, uh, definitely. It's like um, something you have to keep in mind. It's a very confidential conversation you'll be having with a client. So yeah. it's not something you want to take lightly because uh, people don't just open up to anybody, right? They open up to people who they feel comfortable with. Uh, that gets me to the next question. You have a knack of asking questions which people most coaches shy away from. What do, do you I do shy that? away from? No, no, no. Most you have a way of asking questions which other coaches may shy away from. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of coaches, and it's probably to do with experience uh, rather mm-hmm. than anything else. But there's a lot of coaches out there who. I would describe as doing on-the-surface coaching where they're asking a few questions and they're they're getting some answers and their client is probably moving a little bit forward, but they, they're scared of asking the really deep questions because maybe they're not quite sure where to go with the answer or what to do with that client's response or reply. And so they shy away from it. Or maybe they've never been taught how to do that in the first place. So for me, when people come to me, and people come to you because they've got something that they want resolved in their life, in their business. Now, and that is, again, one thing that I would like to point out is I'm a transformational success coach, which means that I work with people 
in both their business and their lives because I believe, it's my philosophy, that if something is going wrong in your life, then that is going to impact in your business, in your career. And if something is going wrong in your life, then it is sure to impact on your business or in your career. So holistic transformational success coaching is about covering all aspects of your life. So it's not just concentrated on business and it's not just concentrated on life as other coaches do. It's both of them. It's all of your life. It's a very holistic viewpoint. So my responsibility as a coach is to ensure that my clients get the result that they want to have in their life. But here's the conundrum, Mina, because when people come to you in the very, very initial stages, they come to you with an idea of what they want fixed or where they would like to have a result. And what happens is once the, the coaching relationship is formed and gets stronger through trust being built and connection being grown, then what happens is they start to open up. And what we often find, and I use we as in coaches in general, but I certainly do find it almost in every case, is that what the person comes to you with is not the real issue. And it's not Mm -hmm. until you have built up the relationship, and sometimes that can be as quick as 15, 20 minutes, depending on the energetic connection that you have with that client, or sometimes it can be as long as an hour, And I wouldn't go further than that. Generally, when I connect with clients, I may be able to do so very quickly. So it's about getting underneath the surface. So it's about asking questions so that you get to the real issue that's causing them the most pain. You get to the the real problem that if they get that resolved, then everything else starts to fall into place. And that is the beauty of it. So for every client, it's individual. I don't work from a script. Um, you know, I don't, and I don't um, encourage anyone to do that because you have this amazing connection with this individual who has invested, not just financially, but their time and their belief in you as a coach. And you then have a responsibility to ensure that they get the result that they want. And I do that specifically by using really deep searching questions and bringing into play my other modalities if and when they're required. Yes, I can fully appreciate and understand that because when uh, when as a coach you're working, when you are connected with yourself, I find it's easy to connect with other people. Do you find that? I mean, when I'm kind of grounded and aware of what's around me, and I find that it's so easy for me to connect with what's around me. Do you find that when you're working with somebody? Yeah, absolutely. When I go on to a coaching call or into a coaching environment, and this is part of my uh, Reiki training and energy training, and it's a bit about you become empty. So you don't Mm -hmm. carry in there anything else that's happening in your life or my life or my business. You go in there almost as an empty vessel so that you are serving that client and that client alone. And you are responding to whatever it is that they are saying in that time. Because another quite fascinating thing that I do is that I don't take notes. Now, I know a lot of coaches do this. I do not take client notes during a call because if I was to do that, it would break the connection. It would break the momentum of what we're getting to. What I do, though, is record the calls so that my clients can then play them back. And that works much better than stopping and writing things down or actually trying to count how my clients are doing. I've seen some people do this, you know, like zero to ten, how are you feeling? And 
work from there, all that sort of thing. I don't do any of that. I'm very much a, an open book, a free vessel, an empty vessel, so that every coaching conversation I go into, I'm focusing solely on that client and that client alone, and they are getting all of me and not just a part of me. Wow, well, that's amazing, Pepsi, guys. I'm here talking to Pepsi McLean on my show. If you want to connect with her, do so on her website, which is www.petsymclean.com. She also has a Facebook group for the Big Word Living. Do join the Facebook group or drop her an email on Pepsi at PetsyMcLean.com. Right, well, Pepsi, is there any other way they can connect with you, any other guests? I've given them three links to connect with you if they ever want to have a conversation with you. But it's amazing Absolutely. learning. I, I, I actually, I'm kind of learning a lot from this conversation as well. And the question I really have, it's, this is my sort of, uh, I find that I, I, I procrastinate a lot. Do you come mm. across clients who do that? And how do you help them overcome that? Any easy way to get around that? Hello? Hello, I'm sorry, I've lost Dusty for a minute there. I will try to connect her as soon as I can. I'm not sure what's happened there. Just bear with me while I see if she's dropped off the line. Um, she was having a lovely conversation with me that hour. It's the magic. Hello, Betsy, can you hear me? Hello. Seems like we've lost connection with Betsy. By the way, it's hi guys. Sorry, I'm trying to connect with Betsy. Oh, she's on the line again. Bear with me. I'm just going to reconnect her. I'm not sure what happened there. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hi, I'm, Mina. I don't know what happened there. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. I was, for a minute, I was thinking, what happened there? But yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can. Sorry about that. Uh, magic of the technology. Sometimes and, things happen. Right? Yeah. Yeah, this is another challenge, isn't it? It does happen. And it's just about bouncing back from it and having a plan B sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, I was... regard... yeah. yeah with regards sorry. to procrastination, it's okay. With regards to procrastination, I think the step before that is about yes. becoming aware of what is keeping you stuck. Because stuck is just another word for procrastination. And it's the becoming aware that's actually much more important. Because without the awareness, you'll just keep doing what you're doing. So becoming aware... How do you get to that stage of where you're aware that you are not doing what you're either meant to do, should do, want to do, and not doing? So becoming aware is about getting really still with yourself. It's about recognizing that you are behaving in a pattern that you've probably behaved in many, many times over your life. So if someone is procrastinating about something right now, they will have had that pattern of behavior for a long time. And that will be something that perhaps that they've grown up with, that they have picked up because it was modeled by their parents or older siblings or other people in authority when they were at a young age, like teachers. And so they will have picked it up, social conditioning from, from other people, and it will have become a pattern of their own. And when we talk about behavioral patterns, all that is is a habit. And habits are formed when you repeat doing something over and over again, whether it's good for you or not. Well, about becoming aware 
is about the recognizing that, oh my goodness, this is not the first time I've behaved like this. And the way that you 